Hey everybody out there in podcast land, this is your host, Severin Henderson. This is Firecast, as presented by Department 3C. Um, this is just a generic intro. Probably means I wasn't able to get into the studio to put an intro together, but I still wanted to provide a podcast and I wanted to provide an intro to what we were going to be talking about. So hopefully you enjoy the episode and you can read in the comments or the show notes description what the episode is all about. But like I said, I just wanted to put something together so that you can know that it's your favorite podcast. <laughs> All that being said, I usually say this at the end, but I'll put it here. Please reach out with any comments, likes, dislikes, any information that you want to pass on to us. Our email address is info at department3c.com. And I hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks again for listening. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Um, we're today, even though we don't have the video going, we'll still. Oh, she got a video going. That's even. That's cool. Um, we're at the Black um, Heroes of Fire. This is a celebration of Engine One of Engine Twenty One. I was gonna call them One Twenty One. Engine Twenty One. Um, their 150th year anniversary is coming up in December of this year, and um, retired Chief DeKal Walcott has brought us all together to have a bunch of conversations um, that have to do with the fire service, the paramedic service, emergency service overall. So today I have the great pleasure of speaking with Mr. John Hardy, Mr. Alexander Watts, and Mr. Samuel Clark, um, all retired CFD members. And I can't introduce them any better than they can introduce themselves. So we'll start with you, Mr. Hardy. How are you? Can you introduce yourself and tell us about yourself? Yeah, well, John Hardy. Um, I uh, am one of the uh, members of the EMS uh, that started back in 1970. Cool. Uh, it started with... Uh, and Al and Skates and Elijah Strickland, the name, a couple other brothers. Uh, uh, it was a program for uh, uh, people from targeted areas, mm -hmm. Vietnam veterans, mm -hmm. which I was a veteran. Uh, and uh, I got into the program. Okay. Um, before I keep going, I would be um, remiss if I didn't mention today is September 11th. Um, uh, everybody in the United States, all over the world knows what happened on September 11th, and we are in a rescue service and a rescue capacity. So we do have to mention that. So, um, you know, maybe later on in the podcast, we'll talk about where you guys were at at that time and what you had going on. That sound good to you, gentlemen? Cool, cool. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, Mr. Alexander Watts, can you introduce yourself to us, please? Sure. My name is Alexander Watts. I'm, uh, I come into the uh, program through by uh, Model Cities. I was unemployed, but a Vietnam veteran. And there was a uh, article in the paper in reference to jobs for Vietnam veterans. So, mm -hmm. I went down and I applied for it. Do one thing with your mic real quick, sir. I had this extra thing on there and talking to it now. Okay. Yep, even better. Okay, and <laughs> I applied for the uh, position and uh, I had to go down to be interviewed down in uh, the Daily Center, I believe. And I spoke with the gentleman and he looked at my... W two my DD two fourteen form mm -hmm. and he says you're you're a Vietnam veteran and I said yeah that speaks for itself and so he says okay then are you interested in being an ambulance attendant mm, okay I says yeah I am interested because I'm I'm unemployed you know so he says okay and he said one one more question now he says can you stand the sight of blood. And I say, sure, as long as it's not my blood, you know. <laughs> and the guy says, okay. 
you got the job. You'll get a letter in the mail a couple of weeks from now. I says, are you sure? He says, positive. Okay. He said, you're in. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was in, uh, I think we started out in August of 1970. Okay. Wow. And we first uh, paycheck came in September, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, rode uh, in these white Bonneville ambulances mm. at that time. And it was set up so uh, the firefighter would drive. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a little gurney on the side behind the firefighter. And it was what we call a jump seat. Mm -hmm. And we would pick up people off in the streets. There wasn't too much we could do other than get them to the hospital as fast as possible. Okay. And it, it uh, originated from there. Okay. That's, that's awesome. That sounds great. Okay. Um, Mr. Samuel Clark, can you introduce yourself to us, please? Yes, sir. Well, I, I came on the job uh, as a paramedic uh, in 1981. So uh, these gentlemen, John and uh, Al, uh, paved the way for me. Okay. I, I came on in... Uh, 1981, as a paramedic, you, you actually, you had to be a paramedic to come on the job at that time. Mm -hmm. You went to school prior mm -hmm. to uh, coming on the fire department. So uh, I came on uh, as a candidate paramedic uh, in 81. I was, uh, my first assignment was Ambulance 38, uh, which was right over here in Hyde Park. Mm -hmm. uh, um, then I went on to uh, other assignments after that, and uh, 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 the um, you, you know there were different ranks. You came on as a candidate, and then as a uh, you went uh, you had your year on the job as a fire paramedic, and then it was paramedic officer, and mm -hmm. then field officer, and mm -hmm. so forth. But uh, so um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much uh, up until thirty three years on the job. Okay. I retired and. August of 2014. Oh, that's great. That's a, that's a nice nice career. As an assistant deputy chief paramedic. And that's what I was going to ask you next. Where did you end up at? Well, I was an assistant deputy chief paramedic at Field Division South. Things had quite, changed quite a bit from the time that even uh, I came on, and certainly uh, quite a bit more uh, since uh, Al and John had come on. But mm -hmm. uh, the, the South Side headquarters for EMS – uh, was called Field Division South, mm -hmm. and so I was uh, the you know in in charge of the South Side paramedics for my shift mm -hmm. uh, at uh, Field Division South. Okay, so, that's 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 outstanding. Yeah. And you came on when I was coming out of my parents, <laughs> 1981. Uh, uh, okay, so all right, yeah. it, yep. So that's that's that. Okay, that's that's awesome. Um, for Mr. Watts and uh, Mr. Hardy, where did you guys end up when you retired? Um, where, where, what was your highest position that you were at? My highest position was uh, ambulance commander. Okay. And I was um, the commander at Midway Airport. Okay. And that was Ambulance 54. Okay. And that's the last duty station I had mm -hmm. prior to retiring. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hardy, how about you? Well, uh Ambulance 25 was my uh, last assignment. Okay. So you guys, uh, we'll start with you. You started in 1970, kind of where the service began. And I've heard different types of stories of how the service began. I heard first it was under police. Um, then fire kind of picked it up um, just to help out. And then it grew and grew and grew from there. Like you were saying, Mr. Watts, uh, originally you were just picking people up and taking them to the hospital. When did it kind of change to where we were doing interventions in the field before we took people to the hospital? Yeah, I believe that began in uh, 1974, I believe. It was a paramedic program that was implemented at uh, Resurrection Hospital. Mm -hmm. And that's on Talcott and, Har and Harlem Avenue. Mm -hmm. And myself and Bob Skates went to the uh, program. And we took the course and we did the training. And after that, you had to be certified. Mm -hmm. and once you take a state exam, then you got 
got to have three months of uh, ride time to get things together. You got to have a, a different incidents would would uh, make you eligible for certification after the three months. Right. Now, being in Chicago, you know, we're busy now as we were busy before. Um, it, I'm sure it didn't take any time to get those certifications out of the way or get those special assignments out of the way, right? Right. You're correct. Uh, it didn't. Uh, we, we would, you know, sometimes they depend on the emergency. Everything came in. It started off as an inlator, an inlator, you know, but then they began to be a bit more de descriptive about what situation was at hand. Now, I'm not familiar. What's an inlator? Uh, they, they, someone having difficult breathing. Is oh, they, okay. Is gotcha. Short term. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Hardy, what about you? Uh, mm -hmm. He kind of gave us the breakdown of when it started. How about your career? Did you go to the same program at Resurrection? No. I, uh, well, I came through, uh, Northwestern and U of C. Okay. But, uh, <clears throat> We had, uh, at that time, they were certifying, and we had <clears throat> a guy uh, on the fire department that was putting his people through. I was one of the last to get certified. Okay. <laughs> you know? So, uh, and that's another story in mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> eventually, <clears throat> I got certified, and, uh, you know, I'm on the job. <laughs> working yeah yeah so uh i don't know it's kind of uh man just to stop and think about things i <clears throat> kind of hard you know what i mean yeah try and uh tell it to somebody right now okay well we got tons of time as much yeah, time and as it's you guys gonna take got. time because <laughs> i <clears throat> had to kind of get comfortable and jog my memory yeah you know yeah because uh, I really wasn't set up to go into it, you know. Mm -hmm. But we'll do what we can. I, I okay. appreciate that. Whatever you can do is is what I take. So thank yeah. you. Thank you again for being here. Um, so <coughs> where did you guys tend to work at the most? Um, like South Side, North Side, West Side, all over the place. Where were you at mostly? I, just all three of you guys. Well, well, initially, after um, after becoming an ambulance attendant, um, my assignment was at uh, Engine 16 Quarters, okay. which is, uh, that was Ambulance 30, 35, mm -hmm. and that was on 40th and Dearborn, and that was, at that time, it was um, projects mm -hmm. around, so it, it was a black, black uh, neighborhood, you mm -hmm. know, and um, we would, uh, I would work with the firefighter. He would drive, and we would do the first aid. Okay. And then, you know, put him in the back of the ambulance and then transport him to the hospital. And and that was when we were working. Initially, we started out working eight-hour shifts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but that didn't, that didn't go over too well, though. So, Can you uh, tell me why? Well, a lot of times guys were, mm -hmm. got, into different situations and couldn't get to work and the other person had to leave and it just was kind of chaotic because it had us in a situation like uh unless you're properly relieved mm -hmm. then you can be terminated mm -hmm. so so you're, you're just kind of stuck there you know mm -hmm. whether you wanted to or not you had to wait until your relief man came okay and, and you had to sign a journal sign in and sign out mm-hmm Sounds like today, because the <laughs> medics today, they, they get that mandatory and they just are there. So I feel for them a lot in a lot of ways, because, you know, if you have something planned or something you want to do, even if you want to just relax, kind of just having to be at work isn't necessarily, you know, the best thing. So I I can understand that. Well, well and, and one more thing I tell you, when we're doing the three eight hour shifts, mm -hmm. so uh you know, and and depending on what firehouse you went to or you were assigned to, mm -hmm. and there were 
some officers that were not so receptive to ambulance attendants mm -hmm. coming in, into the firehouse. They called it invading their privacy, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And we weren't firemen, and they didn't want us in there. Yeah. And so initially we came in, and they gave us a uniform. <clears throat> it was blue, blue, blue pants and blue shirt, and it had a American flag on it. Mm -hmm. But the firefighters, you know, they were felt that we were attempting to pass ourselves off as a firefighter wearing that blue. Mm -hmm. And so they, they griped about that. And so eventually the department gave us light blue shirts. Okay. And that would distinguish uh, an ambulance attendant from a firefighter. Okay. And, and that worked out so well, you know, for us. But uh, there were a lot of resentment and they just did, didn't want us in the firehouse. They said that we were men of questionable character, you know. Wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. We got it from all in, man, you know. Yeah. Black and the whites. Yeah, yeah. That, and, uh, but that's hey, not cool. It didn't, uh, it didn't uh, bother me because as long as they didn't put their hands on me, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, you know, do my job. Yeah. But uh, it's just uh, something, you know, how uh, we weren't a part of the blacks that were on the job. Mm -hmm. And uh, we out there trying to help our own, you know, and uh, we getting all kind of flack, you know. Yeah. You know, I, I guess they were a part of the group that they were a part of, you know. Mm -hmm. So, because uh, we weren't firefighters. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, it was a program that started to uh, help people that uh, because doctors didn't make house calls, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the ambulance was uh, just there for firefighters. It was not an EMS service. Really? No. I didn't know that. So no, it, it was, was just for firefighters Only got for hurt. Only for firefighters that got hurt. Okay. I didn't okay, know that. So there, it was not an emergency medical service. Okay. <clears throat> so... You know, we came along and uh, uh, started that program, you know, and then we kept uh, upgrading ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. as a, and uh, became paramedics. Okay, that's... You know, ambulance attendants to paramedics. To paramedics, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. But initially, coming on, they told um, uh, every, everyone that we would eventually become firefighters. Exactly. And we will work in hand in hand with the firemen, learn how to roll hoses mm -hmm. and and pull ladders, you know, extend mm -hmm. ladders and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, once we got into the firehouse, it was a uh, no, no, you're different not story. A firefighter. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But see, Daly told us that, and yeah. then he died. Oh, okay. So yeah. them plans. Yeah. See, he brought us on mm -hmm. and put McCarthy over us. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Uh, you know, he, because uh, he, you know, at that time, there was no union. It was just a handshake. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And he told us, you know, he talked to us and told us, he said, you guys will be firefighters. Okay. You know, because he was trying to get away from that scandal, I guess, they had with the police and fire selling bodies, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to uh, funeral homes. Now, I was about to say, tell us a little bit more, just a, a bit more in depth about the selling bodies, because that was more of a election type of thing, wasn't it? Not that? election. It was just standard that was going on at the time. Okay. Can you explain it to you me, know, please? Well, <clears throat> you know, uh, when you had an accident on the streets where well, the police would remove the bodies, mm -hmm. you know, if, if that was a fatality or anything like that. Right. Or, yeah, well, and then take them to a funeral home. And uh, the family would have to get the body from that funeral home. <laughs> oh, man. You know, if the funeral home did not do the service. Okay. So that became a lucrative practice. I that turned into a scandal. Yeah. That, that eventually did. brought us on to keep it down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you can look into it. It's history. I, I definitely will, <laughs> but it's something you know. You know I, I I heard and learned about a few things. This is gonna yeah. be one where I add to the feather in the cap to learn a little bit more. So thank you. Just want to say, you know, about the uh, 
they're, they're talking about how it was with the firefighters, uh, with the ambulances transporting firefighters only from fires. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's exactly the way it was. Private ambulance companies used to uh, handle house calls. And everybody fast forward to 2022 when you can dial 911 in the ambulance and you get two fire trucks and, and an ambulance and they rush up to your house. It wasn't like that back in the 50s and 60s. Okay. It didn't start really until you guys came on, Al and John, because Seven. prior to that, the, the private ambulance companies, and I worked for two or three private ambulance companies before I even came on the fire department. Mm -hmm. But by that time, fast forward to 1981, EMS, the EMS system had evolved, evolved to what you see on TV pretty much, you know, with emergency one and mm -hmm. all that and telemetry and doctors uh, talking to paramedics over the telemetry radio before, and then starting IVs in the field. Mm -hmm. Didn't do any of that stuff back in back in, 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 in the day, as we say. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, so... You know, it was it was a, a lot going on that that like they said that caused uh, some some scandalous yeah, things I that were going that. on, yeah. and people were making money and taking money, and mm -hmm. the private ambulance companies were in on it too. Yeah, I can see. You that. know, so it would kind of be a race to a body so that you could essentially get paid extra, like if you. They had ambulance chasers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not the lawyers, but just the regular <laughs> oh, ambulance yeah. chasers. Yeah. Okay. And they, they had them it, when I came on the job in 81. They, you know, and ambulances were chasing. I mean, ambulance chasers and tow truck drivers and everything else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, but some of that, the tow truck drivers, they still chase people around. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I guess yeah. the, the cargo has changed from bodies to vehicles. So, that, that that's better. So you guys kind of helped out on that. Um, tell me about. You said you came in. They kind of told you you're going to be firefighters. Then the um, mayor passed away, and plans changed and everything. And it seems like you guys were doing triple the work, kind of what paramedics are doing now. I mean, you're doing your job. You're doing other parts of fire jobs. And then you're just maintaining, you're doing a job for the citizens. You know, it's, you got to watch your stuff. You got to watch the firefighter stuff. You got to watch the people out there. Tell me a little bit about that, um, how that worked out for you or how that worked, period. Well, well, that was, uh, it was like uh, we were ambulance attendants. Mm -hmm. And so they, depending on the firehouse that you were in, and bo mostly all of them had that same uh, view that they didn't allow you to come into their kitchen uh, or you couldn't go upstairs to the bunk room or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. you, you were mainly confined to the first floor, to the apparatus floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, if you got a call or something, you would write that information down and, and get into the ambulance and the fireman would come and he would drive to the scene. But it was never no no duties that they would have you to do as far as learning how to roll hoses or none of that. It was just strictly uh, uh, basic life support. Okay. And and you know one of the problems that we got into had into we had to when we go to the hospitals and you know if you bandage someone then and you had to replace your supplies mm -hmm. and a lot of times we were we were just you know scarfing four by fours you know because exactly. we, we didn't if you go in and you use a, a box of four by fours and, and a, a bandage or something that bandages up someone then a lot of times the hospital didn't want to replace that you know <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so you 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 had to had to had to do what you do, though. You know, you walk around and scarf something and put it in the, in yeah. the you know. Like, man, hey, look over there. We <laughs> would deliver babies with our bare hands. Oh, man. <laughs> no. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I believe it. That's yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. Isn't that something? Yes. That's... Yeah, with no gloves. No, no gloves. When, even when yeah. I came on the job in 81, paramedics very seldom wore yeah. gloves in the back of the ambulance. No. And they had 
cardboard boxes where you stuck the needles in. Oh man! And, and, and <laughs> yeah. we always would stick. You know, I'm mm. probably going to don't, don't don't like to hear this, but <laughs> we stick the needle in the seat. Yeah, you know, in the bench, yeah. so yeah. to speak. And uh, that that wasn't exactly the most antiseptic way of uh, no yeah. handling things. But exactly. I have zero time on you guys' careers, and when I started. EMT school, um, my teacher, he was an older gentleman, but he would tell us all of these same kind of stories. Like, oh, back in the day, you know, you come in the hospital with blood up to your elbow. Like, yeah, look at me. I do. It's, it's kind of like the same way yeah. with the firefighters wanting to be dirty. Mm. And even yeah. now it's like, no, nah, you got to wash all that stuff off because right, that's the right. way to be. So you guys were in the same boat like... But it doesn't sound like you want it to be in that same boat. It's just kind of what, what the practice was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the practice. Didn't even wear seatbelts half the time. Yeah, no, no seatbelts. No, you got to, uh, you know, uh, you, you know, it's smoking different practices. Room, that, that you know, you smoking <laughs> with the patient, huh? <laughs> I won't say all that. I, know, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't see, but you know, I'm just saying uh, a lot of. The, the rules were different back then, even yeah. even for firefighters. I mean, they didn't wear masks and right, you know, right. going in the building, you were pulling the ceiling with, with a cigarette hanging out your mouth. Yeah, yeah. you know. But uh, I was going to say just one thing, added on to the the the, the thing with uh, firefighters. You fast forward to 1981 when I came on, and and the class that I was in. I was one of two blacks in the class, so 35 paramedics okay. down at the fire academy. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to be the first class to cross train as firefighters. Okay. And, and uh, the commissioner was William Blair at the time, mm -hmm. and he was from California. Mm -hmm. And he brought the California style of firefighting to Chicago in, in addition to the paramedic thing, which mm -hmm. was real big out in California. And so they didn't like that too much in Chicago, you know, yeah. bringing your style of that West Coast stuff here. Yeah, uh -uh. Yeah. So we we got halfway through the academy. They'd actually started training us, you know, uh, in uh, you know, going through the smoke tunnel and, and putting on uh, the SCBA, the, the air mask. Mm -hmm. And they and they were going to have us train firefighters and to, in, to be first in, in first aid. And they just stopped it halfway through. Okay. It, all of a sudden, one day it just stopped. No more training. That's it. You're done. Yes. So, wow. but we were supposed to be the first uh, cross train, cross -train. Yeah. fully cross trained uh, class. Yeah, that's not and, uh, soon. But a couple of years later, William Blair was gone. Okay. And, and that's a long story. And then somebody else came and then <laughs> right. cross -train. But no more cross training. It was a while after that. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that all of those stories are eerie, eerily similar to what still goes on. Some some of the things, some of the aspects. Um, oh, sure. yeah. The the thing that disappoints me, and I know it's nothing we can do about it now. But you say there were blacks already on the job as firefighters, and even they wouldn't like show you anything or talk to you or tell you anything. That's the part that that kind of hurts my feelings well very, very few the, the only ones yeah. that were would be a little receptive to you were uh the firefighter driving the ambulance okay you know, okay so, but other than that uh the, the other guys uh that were on the engine or the truck they the so association with them was very minute you know very little mm -hmm. yeah it was a difference you know uh we weren't a part of them, and they made it obvious, you yeah. know, that we were nothing, which we weren't firefighters, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, we were out here uh, doing our job, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Helping yeah. our people. Yeah. You know, and, and helping all people. Yep. Yeah. That's the part but, that I appreciate you saying so much because, like you said, you were helping everybody. And... At the same time, you're doing an outstanding job, and it's kind of like, it, I don't know. It, it just seems like it would be difficult to continually go through that um, well, day in and day out. You see, it's a difference when, you know, you go out to help someone, mm -hmm. and 
you get an assist, an ambulance assist is standing around with your hands in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. You know, that used to happen. Yeah. You know, because I've had guys say, man, I didn't come on this job to be a doctor. I've heard that. Even you now. see? <laughs> yeah, but what about helping your people? Yes. You know? A lot of that, you know, and, uh, you know, we saw that. Mm-hmm. You know, had to come through that, man, but we had to uh, continue to do our job. You know, but you did an outstanding job at that. And that's the work ethic that I wish that would still pass on and kind of happen now. Um, All too often we have people who use that same line. And like I said, I ain't got no time and I'm still trying to help out. It's people who got less time than me saying, I didn't come on here to do this and that and other. See, they're waiting on. on something to burn down. Yeah. When the job has evolved to helping every citizenry. Yes. And and I didn't even know that the ambulances were just for firefighters. Like I said, that's something new that I... I, Oh, yeah. I always thought it was there to help people. And like I said, I heard it was just um, through the police department. The police department kind of dispatched the ambulances and things like that. Yeah, well, people will muddy the water and make you think it was like that okay you know well that's why we, yep you can we can clear it out put it yeah. through a sift and <laughs> yeah <laughs> put it through a strainer the ems that you see today has kept fire the ems that you see today has kept firehouses open that because is, yep. a lot of these fire trucks you see running up down the street these days and and for a, a good while they're going to ems calls mm-hmm. and uh there's fewer buildings burning yeah you yeah know, as technology improves you know but uh so yeah. people are always gonna be sick ems has kept <laughs> firehouses open a lot of people don't like to hear that but ems right, has kept right. firehouses open it's like a undeniable truth i mean we we know that that's the case i mean number crunchers know that that's the case right. um we don't want to see any companies go out of service whether no. fire or ambulances right. but definitely no, in the absolutely. city need to be more right ambulances but it's nice to be acknowledged see the the when when i came on the job and certainly when john and and uh, Al came on the job. You know, it was, this is a job. It, it was it was repeated on a daily basis. This is a job for firefighters. You were made to feel as though you were second class citizen, which is as though you were. A, you know, we'll, we'll allow you to be on our our job. Yeah, and that's that's the and part. that's the kind of things you used to hear. Yeah, and, and, I you, believe and feel, and they treated you like a second class citizen on a good day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. I know um, at my first house, we didn't have an ambulance, so I didn't have a ton of interaction with crews unless we went out and saw them because I was on the ALS um, apparatus. But now I, I'm in a house that, have an, that has an ambulance, and we try our best to, you know, because they are bearing the brunt of everything. They go out all day, all night, like I was explaining to you, the um, mandatories that they have to stay a whole extra day. Not just some hours, they got to stay a whole day. <laughs> and, you know, we try and cook for them, put, them put, put the food to the side for them, everything we, we can. And I know that that's the practice and the custom in a lot more places than it was. So we tried to get better, and hopefully we can continue down that path. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So for... I'll start with you, Mr. Clark, um, since the other two gentlemen are, um, came on before you. Who is someone that kind of helped influence your career, somebody that you kind of looked up to and, and you know, just kind of kept you going or someone you wanted to be like? Well, um, you know, I, I, the, the person that probably influenced me in terms of being a paramedic, at, at, when I first came on the job, I didn't. I didn't know Al and John, mm-hmm. uh, although later on they did influence me, and, and uh, like I said, I, uh, they paved the path for uh, for a lot of us, including myself. But my father actually was the one that influenced me. He, he was uh, my father was an undertaker in Tennessee. Okay. And back in the day, the the, the funeral homes were uh, did the ambulance service. Mm-hmm. There was no nine one one. There was none of that. The, the funeral homes did the ambulance service. So my my father taught me 
how to make a stretcher, how to load a stretcher. And, and I used to, uh, when I was six years old mm -hmm. That's and, and I used to stand in, in front of the funeral home and watch him go off and, and on an ambulance call mm -hmm. and they handled accidents and gunshots down in a segregated Tennessee. But mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you were black and you were in an automobile accident, they call the black funeral home. If you were white, they call the white funeral home. It's just yeah. that simple. <laughs> and you went to the black part of the white hospital when you, when if you, you made it there. If you made it there, right. yeah. So, I mean, I say all that to say that that the, the seed was planted in me then. That's an unusual story. That's not your typical. But No, I love that know, story. That's, it is. That's, yeah. and, and not just being my father. Yeah. He influenced me in other ways just because he was my father. Mm -hmm. But... He, that that's where the paramedic seed was planted. I didn't realize that till later, and it just you know. <laughs> but yeah, I love that. I hear you. <laughs> um, what about you two? Anybody influence you, or is it just we showed up and we on this job and we're gonna do it to the best of our ability? Well, I, I think myself. Um, you know, when when I was in uh, in the military, I had a I did a tour in Vietnam, mm -hmm. and I went there in '68. January of 68. But uh, during my tour, they they taught you basic training and AIT. You know, they, they taught you first aid, though. And, and so you didn't really dawn on me about this until I got in Vietnam, you know. And so then I wanted to, to really be able to help somebody. And if, and if I was un less fortunate than the next guy, I wanted, I would want him to do the same for me. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So, so I think that, that that's where I come up with that, though, you know, but just it's just a blessing that when I got out of the military, although I spent some time in hospitals and because I got a lot of injuries over there, mm. and but I spent time in the hospital, and so when, when I came to Stateside, I, I wanted to, I, I, I ran the streets for a while, for a while though, but then I said, this is crazy though, you know? And so then um, uh, the article in the paper about Vietnam veterans working as ambulance attendants, so it, you know, a light bulb come on. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, maybe I can do this, you know? So I, 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 I pursued it though, you know? Mm -hmm. And it worked out for me. Awesome, awesome. Mr. Hardy, how about yourself? Yeah, well, I was a Vietnam veteran and I had no medical training, mm -hmm. just uh, trying to shoot straight. Mm -hmm. you know I was recon, and uh, you know when I came back, uh, I was working on the waterfront. Mm -hmm. I was a longshoreman in the union, and uh, Mayor Daly's Youth Foundation uh, is where we took the training. But I had a guy came come over and tell me, say, hey, Johnny, they are training a Vietnam veteran you know, to work on the ambulance for the Chicago Fire Department. And uh, it was Maurice. Yeah. Yeah, Maurice Perk, mm -hmm. good friend of yeah. ours. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess his mother was politically connected or mm -hmm. whatever. But um, he told me about the job. And I went up and uh, went over there and filled out my application. It started with the Chicago Fire Department then. Mm -hmm. The rest is history, all good yeah. from there. Well, that, that's th those are outstanding, great stories, and they, uh, they're very inspirational for not only myself, but I'm sure for a lot of the listeners. Um, and another question that keeps coming to my mind, um, you guys went through the paramedic program first, and you went from ambulance attendants to paramedics. How did that go? Like, was it like a big shock? Was it more of like... I guess the question I'm trying to get across is what did you learn in paramedic school that was just different from ambulance attendant? Well, um, in ambulance attendant, it was just really just this basic first aid. Uh -huh. yeah, if there's bleeding, you would, you know, uh, put a dressing on the, on it and bandage it. But uh, what the uh, paramedic program, we encountered, uh, you know, people with asthma attacks. And, okay. And, and whereas with basic life support, the only thing you could do was to give them, uh, 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 resuscitate or give them oxygen, mm -hmm. you know, and 
and transport them. But well, as a paramedic, you were it enabled you to start an intravenous line, give them uh, medication that would enhance their their uh, uh, breathing. Of them, you know, mm-hmm. chance of survival yeah. goes up right. and everything. Right. And then in the event that, that it was a heart attack, all you do was just transport with oxygen and get them to the hospital. But as, as a paramedic, you were able to start IVs and uh, administer medication to uh, prolong that person's life. Okay. Well, the number one question I won't ask, because I hate this question, is what's the worst? in Because nobody wants to remember and think of all of those things. But... I'll ask a variation of it. What was one of the best days that you guys had while you were on the job? One of your best, something that really stood out to you, made you proud that you can kind of still think of now? Ah, oh, stumped you. Yeah, it's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. You know, I never even know in terms of more or less. Could it be yes. a retirement day? Like, yes. yep, I'm out of here. Oh, that, there you go. There you <laughs> that's up there. I know that. <laughs> hey, listen, that's a, that's a good day. Uh, yeah, it's. I've had many good days. There's there's a lot of uh, many good, good days. days when you help people. Yeah. And something there's yeah. a lot of things you see that are funny. It's not all blood and guts. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There's some yeah. things yeah. that make you laugh till you're crying. Yeah. And I, yeah. Al was my partner on Ambulance 29, uh, mm. and and we had some days, man, when we just laughed. I mean, some calls that make you laugh, and yeah. that other calls that make you say some other things. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, but uh, yeah. the uh, you know, I don't have an about... answer for that right now. <laughs> I don't you know? have an answer. Yeah, yeah. thinking of you yeah, know, I'd I'm have just to uh, yeah. more of that over a little bit. You know, you know <laughs> yeah. like I said, a retirement day can be it. So we survived yeah. it. Um, yeah. we, yeah. Survived. we survived. That's it. Where we're here to talk about it. Exactly. Um, I have. This question, and then one more, and I'm going to let you guys get out of here. Um, at the beginning of the podcast, I kind of talked about September 11th, and all of you gentlemen, were you still on, you were still on the job then. And, you know, I didn't get you two's retirement dates. Um, I got your last house, but I didn't get when you retired. Okay, my retirement date was uh, 2000. Yeah, I retired 2000. 2000. Okay, so you weren't you uh, retired before then too? I, I, I retired a year after you didn't. I yeah. believe. Yeah, man. I, I hope this ain't Alzheimer's kicking in. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you, man. <laughs> things that are behind me, I leave behind. I'm with that. I'm. And I'm I, I mean that that's been my life. I'm with that. You know, things that have happened to me, I have to kind of sit down and think about it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, but you know, it'll come to me later. But yeah, yeah, you know. Just yeah, to, but I retired a year after that. Just to pick it out. Yeah. I mean, I was I was actually in a, a, a supervisor's training class. It's uh, it's called supervision of uh, fire personnel, mm-hmm. and it was the class was being held up in um, I think it was Lincolnwood at a firehouse up there, and mm-hmm. so we were literally uh, being taught by somebody that was in charge of Northern Illinois' emergency response team, and all of a sudden his pages started going off like crazy, and and we were watching the television, mm-hmm. and we were sitting there, the whole class was watching the planes going to the the uh, you Into know the, the, the towers yep. and, and the Pentagon, and I'm watching the the planes going to the one going to the Pentagon and. My mother had lived in Washington, D.C. at the time. Oh, and I could yeah. see the area that she lived in mm. behind the Pentagon. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So I got a little, you know, yeah. got a little uh, personal for me there. Yeah. Uh, but, and and pretty soon the, the class was had to be dismissed because it was just. Yeah, nobody was. Yeah, that was yeah, it. And yeah. I went home. Yeah. Okay. Well, like I said, I just wanted to just because it's the, the, today is the day. I just wanted to get that information from you. Um, last quick, you want to? Yeah. Uh, when that that nine eleven, I was uh, I was I was at home though, mm-hmm. and and I'm watching television, and uh, and I'm and it, it come on, you know, and and after I, I realized what was happening, you know, and I'm like, man, uh, boy, uh, you know, I felt like I wanted to. Do something. Do something. Uh, but yes. but I, I I I thought that well, ain't too much I can do. But shortly after that, they they did this thing about uh, 
about the uh, uh, airport. So I became one of those people, you know, the, the at, 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 TSA. Yeah, yeah TSA. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I did that, you know. I felt that I can do something, though, you know. Mm -hmm. So I, I got into that, and I I worked it for a while, though, but. You know, a lot of crazy people out there, and you work mm -hmm. with crazy people. I'm like, yeah. I told them, I said, look, I don't have to do this here. You know, I can go home. Yeah. You know, so I, I just left, you know. Too you, much like the job, right? <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. It's, it's, you guys, all of you have that ingrained need to help people and i hear that come across in every single one of your answers every time you answer you say well we were there to help people we were there to help people we were there to help people and that's just such a um great and human thing and something that we should you know pass on to more people and that kind of leads me into the last question i was going to ask each of you gentlemen so um we Chicago's always hiring. Um, we always bring in new people, and hopefully new people take the chance and opportunity to listen to podcasts like this and everything. What's um, not one piece, but just a piece of advice that you could or would offer a young person coming on the, onto the job in any capacity? If they're going to be a firefighter, if they're going to be a paramedic, any, any capacity. Follow your passion, do what you love. You can make a living doing what you love and and follow your passion and uh, stay in school. <laughs> stay in Go school. To, yeah. yeah. Education, education, education. Because, you know, it's uh it's a physically demanding job. It still is, even though they have one and a half person stretches now but <laughs> we didn't work that lucky you know but with, you know but it's still a physically demanding job mm -hmm. fighting is as well as you know mm -hmm. but uh yeah have a backup plan have a plan b and a c love that how about you too well it's, it's about the same i feel yeah. that you know they should attempt to do something that they enjoy doing something that that's going to give you get self-gratification by doing doing the job you're doing, you know. And, and uh, I found that over the years uh, as a paramedic and an ambulance attendant, you found that a lot of people didn't have that. They were there for for the money. Mm -hmm. They didn't give a heck about this this guy laying on the ground right. or whatever, right. you know, just my paycheck. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So I feel that if, if it's something you enjoy doing, and you have the heart for it, then that's what you do. Got to enjoy it. Love it. Love yeah, that. well, I would I would say help others because as you're helping others, you're being helped too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we need to pass that on because we all need help, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the way it is in life, man. And you know, well, you know what? Like I said, I'm I won't I won't beat you guys over the head with any more questions. But I just want to make a quick statement. Um, I really appreciate more than you know, probably more than words can even express. Um, you guys' words of wisdom, your words of encouragement, and your story. Um, obviously, um, Chief Walcott got us all together. He called you guys up and scheduled this. And it's in celebration of the book, The Black Heroes of Fire. But it, you guys are the epitome of what these gentlemen on these pictures right here did. They say, well, we're going to get out this door faster, not just to help us. We're going to go out there. We're going to help people. Yeah. And you guys have just made me made my day with just the words of helping people and like you said it's something we need to pass on to sure. other people and i hope that people can take that to heart and take that to mind and go on and go forth and keep doing that can i just say one, one absolutely thing? i just think that the, the paramedics that are coming on today mm -hmm. you know, the paramedics uh, the, the, on the ambulances are out there right now mm -hmm. need to know truth about where EMS started. Yes. EMS started with these two gentlemen. With these two guys. Yep. One, one of the gentlemen is, is is passed on. The other, he's here. We're not quite sure where, but right. yeah. but uh, 
Yeah. They need to know the truth about how EMS started. It started with these two gentlemen and, and, and the other gentlemen, uh, was Bob Skates, Elijah Strickland, uh, and, and the folks in 1970. Mm -hmm. They need to know more about that. Yeah. Enough hasn't been said about that, and it, it's about time that people start learning more about the history of EMS yes. as it is today. Yes. I totally agree with that because you guys told me things I had never even heard of. And not to say I've heard of everything, but you guys hit me with some stuff like, yeah, they was, I thought they was taking bodies to like boost numbers. You're like, no, nah, they were just taking them to, <laughs> to take them. And we was just, the, the ambulance being only for the firemen. Yeah. And I'll just say this right quick. What, another thing people don't realize, we didn't mention Ernestine Hooper oh, yeah. passed away uh, mm -hmm. in 91, I believe it was. Anyway, she was the first black female paramedic yeah. on the job. Uh, okay, she was commander. Yeah. She 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 was a commander, mm -hmm. Commander Ernestine Hooper. Ernestine and a lot Hooper. Of folks don't know about that. She was the first black female paramedic. Okay. There. And what about uh, Jesse 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 Edwards? Edwards. Jesse he Edwards, was an ambulance attendant, ambulance attendant. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and he was killed on the job. Yeah, um, they were loading person into the back of an ambulance mm -hmm. and a uh, guy that was intoxicated drove into the back Ooh. of Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. And he, after he died in surgery that's yeah, at the uh, University of Chicago Hospital. Your car ran into the back of him while they were loading a, mm -hmm. a patient. And, you know. Killed in the line of duty. Yeah, killed in the line of duty. Yeah. We, we don't even hear about that. What? So it's not added to the line of duty deaths? Is it? Is it? Is it? In I don't even think it's. I'm not sure if his badge was eventually put on the wall down at the fire academy or not. I'm not sure about that. I'm not I either. It was, but I'm not sure. I'm well, not. Well, I'm gonna write it down. I'm gonna go yeah. go see go check it out. Yeah. And you know what? Uh, another thing before I let you gentlemen go, I said I was done asking questions, but I lied. Um, <laughs> Um, before we started and I was trying to set up, I heard you gentlemen talking about, um, your seniority numbers. Um, just give me a quick breakdown of what you were saying and going over with the seniority numbers. Oh, well, the, the seniority number was implemented and when we came on the job. So, so, um, myself skates and, and, uh, a few other guys, mm -hmm. you know, but, but skates became, uh, supervisor or he got close to the to the administrative people in 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 uh in, in the supervisory position mm -hmm. uh in fact uh colonel mccarthy and then they liked it him so so they that they trusted him but mm -hmm. and and i was telling john i said well I say skates is put down seniority as number one, but it, it's no biggie, you know. <laughs> hey, right, I say, but had right. I made the seniority list out, I mm. would have been number one. <laughs> no, you know? so, so, so that's that's how it started. Oh, you know? Yeah, because okay. see, we were we were all down in Mayor Daly's Youth Foundation. Right. Uh -huh. See, that's where we would train, and mm -hmm. then we would go to the academy right. for our first aid training. Okay, you know, we do our physical training mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and I was working. Before that, across the street at Navy Pier. Okay, you know, that's 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 yeah. Cool. Well, I was awesome. three. I was seniority number three sixty four. So <laughs> when, I, when these guys we came on the job, I was still a student at Kenwood High School. Right? Okay, but well, that, that even still, that's great. I'm I love looking at those numbers and just seeing how things change and evolve, and you know get better and you guys have definitely helped you know they always say make things better for the next person you guys have definitely done that so yeah. but like yeah. like me and Al was saying see we were combat veterans mm -hmm. you know war veterans and he see what we got yeah, yeah. <laughs> right yeah. No, no more than what <laughs> the, the union gave us after we got into it you yeah. Know? yeah yeah well Same well I'd just like to say thank you for that oh, and man. thank you oh, for your service on the fire department. Yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, you know, you, you you can't get thanked enough as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, me, but me, it me. was rewarding enough to be enough. on it. Yeah, you, yeah. Know? Yeah. Right. you know, not looking for it. Uh, 
have have decent person we're working with you. Yeah. And, and like when Sam and I worked together, you know, mm -hmm. it was a fast running rig. Mm -hmm. Angela's twenty nine on hundred and four the Benson's. Yep. And we run all day, all night long. Yep. You know, so, so so you had to had to couldn't couldn't get a put rocks in the jaws every time the bell rang, you know. Mm -hmm. So we we worked it out though, you know. And it was a four wheel drive ambulance too. So oh, you so. had to lift the stretcher up. You had to bring the chest stretcher oh, up yeah. all the way up. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's and, fine. And, it's and fine. So it was like you had to, there was a couple there was some grunting going on there. Yeah. You know, it was like in fact, I got some some photos of me and him when we was transferring the fish around. Okay. Yeah. Well you're gonna have to let let us check some of those out. <laughs> I I was on um, 29 for a day. Um, Are you? Yep, because okay. they, well, like I said, I came on as a paramedic, but on the fire side, so they would um, switch me on to ambulances every now okay. and then. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I, and I'm not a city medic, so a lot of a lot of the medics don't give me credit, which they shouldn't, but oh. <laughs> I, was, I was a medic anyway, and yeah. I had my ambulance times, and that's what makes a day outstanding if you have a good partner you yeah, got a good yeah. day ahead right, of you if y'all yeah. can laugh yeah. and joke yeah. and talk right. and right. Right. and you know just vibe it's a, you it's a be great able day to laugh that's for sure because yeah. paramedics some paramedics have a weird sense of humor i tell you yeah. man we used to ride around <laughs> and go to the heralds and limbs and just have a a sheet over it. Mm -hmm. We get a run, we wrap it up. <laughs> Put it to the side, yep. I mean, that's how we would eat. Yes, we say we wouldn't make it back to the firehouse to right. eat, right? Sun, sun comes up and you got a plate of full food yeah. just trying to stuff it in a little bit so you can get there. So gentlemen, thank you so 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 much. Okay, I man. really appreciate thank you guys. You. Um you guys have a great rest of your day, rest of your week, rest of your month and year and I hope you enjoy this episode when you get a chance to hear. Yeah. It. Well, All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right.